This is a simple power distribution PCB I made with today's sponsor PCBWay. This lets me hook up a power supply to an input terminal, either with the 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel jack, or 0.1 inch headers if I want to use DuPont wires, or these screw terminals. That gives a variety of ways to connect incoming and outgoing power, and I've got at least three uses immediately for this. I also put PTC resettable fuses on here in line with all of the outputs as an extra safety measure in case there is excessive current draw like a short circuit on one of the outputs. Not only will it shut down that output channel, but it'll allow the other channels to still function properly. And on the terminals I didn't mark a plus or minus polarity partly because I could also use AC on here, and also not all DC barrel jacks have a center positive and a ground sleeve. For example, guitar pedals have the opposite. They have a positive sleeve and a negative center terminal. So if polarity is important, then I just drew these diagrams of the barrel jack on each header to show where the inner post or the outer sleeve will be so you can hook it up as needed. So as an example I just put an LED with a resistor on two of these outputs and on the input I have this DC barrel plug and it's going to a 5 volt bench power supply. So if I plug this into the input those two LEDs come on. Now I'll dim the lights. So to demonstrate the PTC advantage if I somehow end up causing a short circuit on one of these channels, the power goes out on that channel, but the other LED is still able to function. And then the fault can be cleared and power is available on all the channels again. While I have 5 volts going through that power distribution board, here's two boards I'm working on that run on 5 volts with a DC barrel jack. And each of these can draw over 400 milliamps peak because we have the ESP module that can draw a couple hundred milliamps, especially when using Wi-Fi. And this is a phone line simulator related project. So this module here, the subscriber line interface circuit, which generates the phone voltages and loop current and everything, that also can draw a couple hundred milliamps. So if I'm using both of these, side by side in development. It's convenient if I just plug cables directly into here to get 5 volts each. So now the LED is lit on each of these ESP32s showing that we're getting 5 volts on both boards and I can work a lot cleaner and neater on that. For a similar application regarding telephone line experiments, I have several external US robotics modems that each run on an AC power adapter between 9 and 11 volts. I'm not sure. I think I've seen adapters for these with slightly different voltages. I'm going to ultimately be wanting to hook these up to the phone line simulator, but I only have a couple of these AC adapters and I can only find this one right now. So if I build a second board, if I'm going to use one of these for delivering 5 volts, I can take a second board and put this adapter in and run cables like that into these modems. And this can do 1 amp. I'm not sure how much current the modems use, but just assuming I can get by with one adapter using two modems, that's an option. Or otherwise I can figure something else out with another spare transformer I have laying around somewhere. And there's another use I have for this, aside from telephone stuff. If I unhook this 5 volt stuff and those LEDs, powering guitar effects. So I have this multi-channel output power supply. Most pedals use 9 volts, so 1, 2, 3, 4, I can use 5, I think it looks like. But in some cases, like one of the projects I'm working on, I may need even up to 10 9 volt sources. So you can get a daisy chain DC barrel jack cable. So you can plug it into one of these if it can do enough current to power multiple effects. 
and you can just use a daisy chain cable with those plugs tapping off every so often. But if you've got this, and especially if you're doing something like working on a circuit for a guitar effect, again, you may cause short circuits. I don't want to risk guessing if this has short circuit protection. So maybe I'd want to use this to distribute nine volts to at least some effects to make up as many as I need. So here I take one of the nine volt outputs and connect it to the input here. Then I have three effect units. So that one's working. That one's working. And that one's working. So each of these now, I can power these on permanently. Again, not overloading this one channel I connected to. Some pedals only need like 20 or 30 milliamps if it's just a couple of op amps. And I think these can do at least 100 milliamps each. Some can do half an amp each. I'm not sure how this is set up. So just making sure I don't overload anything. This is one way I can get multiple outputs instead of just the one. Because ultimately I've got a project where I want to connect, who knows, maybe even up to 10 effects and then keep them always on and just use one of those audio switch matrix things to just activate some of these going in and out of circuit. But they all need to have power and they all need to be on. So maybe I can get away with doing stuff like this and still use a single power supply with limited number of outputs. So another useful utility PCB to have around, which I know I'm going to get a bunch of use out of in the next couple of months alone.